Have you ever thought of drafting your own sewing patterns but just didn't know where to start? Or thought that you couldn't do it because you're just not a math whiz? Maybe you love sewing but commercial patterns stress you out with all those confusing lines and notations, not to mention things like full bust adjustments. This video is for you. First of all, I just want to say that this video is not going to be an attack on commercial patterns in any way. I think commercial patterns are a wonderful thing and if you love using them, then more power to you. This video is more for people who are in the same boat I was a few years ago. You want to sew and you love the idea of custom fit clothing, but having to make all those adjustments to commercial patterns just really stresses you out. Maybe you would rather make your own custom patterns from scratch, but you just have no idea where to begin. So let's get into all of that right now. So why draft your own patterns? Right off the bat, I'd like to talk about some of the reasons why drafting your own patterns is really great. The first reason is fit. If you loathe the idea of making all those adjustments to ready-made patterns and it fits your personality more to make a pattern for your own body from scratch and just go from there, then pattern drafting is a wonderful solution for you. And it's not as hard as you might think it is. The most difficult part of pattern drafting is making your own bodice block. We'll get into that a bit later. But once you have your bodice block, you save it, and that's how you make all your designs, by tracing that off and then making whatever style adjustments you want to it. And in one sense, it can save time, because rather than having to make myriad fit adjustments, if you're using your own self-drafted pattern, you know that it's going to fit you. If you're trying a new design, you'll still have to make a mock-up, but the adjustments will usually be minor compared to commercial patterns. So a second reason for drafting your own patterns is that it can save you a lot of money. Rather than having to buy a new pattern for every garment you make, along with fabric and notions, you can draft it out yourself or use a pattern you've already drafted from your collection. The third reason I'll get into about pattern drafting is that creative possibilities are really endless. Sometimes you'll want to make something that you thought up just out of your own head, and maybe there are no patterns for it. If you can draw a sketch of it, chances are you can draft it out yourself once you have the tools, a good drafting book, and some basic know-how. So let's get into the types of pattern drafting. I'd like to talk about three different types of pattern drafting. The first type is something I have already mentioned. It's a system where you take all your body measurements and draft out your own custom bodice block. And then going forward, you simply trace it off and make whatever style adjustments you want to make. This is really the base for all pattern drafting. Now, a second type of pattern drafting is one which many of you historical sewers will probably be familiar with, and that's manually grading up pre-existing historical patterns. I'm using the word drafting loosely here. It's still a form of drafting, and especially when you consider all the adjustments you usually have to make to get these patterns to fit, a lot of drafting knowledge does come into play with these types of patterns, but personally I prefer the first type of drafting to this. But when it comes to corset patterns or very specific historical styles, this type of drafting can be very helpful to get the exact shapes right. One can even use a hybrid of these first two methods where you use your personal pattern block, but look at a historical pattern as a reference for what shapes you need to plot to your measurements. So the third type of pattern drafting is something I've just become introduced to, and it really is simply an extension of the bodice block method, and that is drafting corset patterns to your own measurements with a book like this one called Stays and Corsets by Mandy Barrington. So you begin with a bodice block in this method, which the book gives instructions on drafting, and then there's a chart for each corset style, giving you the width of each panel depending on your bust waist or hip measurement. So when embarking on your pattern drafting journey, there are some tools that will make everything go much more smoothly for you. The first tool is pattern drafting paper. The main thing you need to look for is paper that is wide and long enough to fit your patterns on without needing to tape. I use this medical exam paper, which is inexpensive and it's available on Amazon, and it doubles as tracing paper. I also use this brown roll of craft paper, which is sturdier and helpful for patterns that you plan on using again and again. You'll also need sharp pencils. I love mechanical pencils because they don't require sharpening and the line is always very precise. Last but not least, you'll need some rulers. 
The main two that I recommend are a pattern master and a yardstick. The yardstick is self-explanatory because you need it to draft out long measurements and keep them straight. The pattern master combines many functions in one. It's clear and it has all these lines in it so you can easily add seam allowances to a pattern. It also has a 90 degree angle and even a French curve line on it. And an optional ruler is a separate French curve ruler. Books have been invaluable to me on my pattern drafting journey. The main one that has taught me how to draft is this one by Winifred Aldrich called Metric Pattern Cutting for Women's Wear. It instructs you how to take your own measurements, how to draft the close fitting pattern block as well as other types of pattern blocks, and then how to take those blocks and adapt them into any type of garment you want, even bras. Another book I've used is Make Your Own Dress Patterns. It is an entirely different format from the one I already mentioned, so they complement each other well. And of course there is the book I already mentioned, Stays and Corsets by Mandy Barrington. I love this book. And there are the myriad of historical pattern books, which contain scaled down patterns, but I'm not going to go into those here. Okay guys, I hope this video answered some of your questions. If there's anything I didn't cover that you'd like to know about, leave me a comment below. Please give this video a like as it helps this content get out to more people who are interested and consider subscribing to my channel for historically inspired sewing and check out the accompanying blog post, which will be linked below. See you all soon. Bye.